Got to get off to a hot, heavy, fast start here on the Luke Kelly Show. Thank you so much for hitting play wherever the hell you listen to this podcast at Spotify, Apple, wherever. Just thank you so much for listening. The reason why I start off fast, high speed, whatever way you want to do that is Nora and I actually saw a high speed chase take place. We went for a good old hot girl walk this weekend. And we saw a whole bunch of cop cars just flying down the road. One after another, lights on. Cops from different towns trying to get to a criminal. That we found out a little bit later, but we kept talking. What do you think is going on right now that all these cops have to be someplace? They have to be going towards something. There has to be a huge emergency going on right now. That's what we kept saying. And uh, I went to bed. I think this happened on like Friday or Saturday. I can't remember which day it was. I can't even remember if I read the article this morning on the news. But the first thing I see is there was a high-speed chase around noon. So exactly what Nora and I saw out on our walk was a high-speed chase. It was very intriguing because we didn't know what was going on. All we kept thinking about, that's all we talked about the rest of our hot girl walk. It was, what exactly do you think is going on right now? Do you think there was a robbery? Do you think that, you know, someone was trying to do something harmful somewhere? It was a high-speed chase. And then in that article, we found out that the person ended up getting away from the cops too. So that person is still at large right now. I'm hoping to find out that over the next couple of days, this dude gets busted. I really want to know why he was running from the cops, right? Because whenever someone gets pulled over, if they're just getting pulled over for speeding, you know that person is just going to stop whatever except the ticket. The only reason why someone is going to run is because they have something against them, some sort of drug in the car, some sort of firearm in the car that maybe they're not supposed to have, or maybe they have an, uh, have a warrant out for their arrest. So there's all those different possibilities, and most likely that's exactly what's going to happen when someone gets pulled over and they run, or someone is very nervous. I've seen on a lot of cop shows of maybe a 16-year-old getting pulled over for the first time and they decide that they just need to run for it. Why? Or there's other scenarios that people are like, oh, we didn't have insurance. That's why we ran. It's like, hey, wouldn't you rather just go to court, pay a small little fee for not having insurance, and then you're good, you could take care of that, instead of now having like big criminal charges against you for fleeing an officer, probably running through a red light, not stopping at stop sign after stop sign after stop sign. I wish we got to see some of that high-speed chase in action. I have before seen a high-speed chase, but nothing really cool of it. Just saw, like, a guy driving crazy down the streets. I was living in downtown Louisville at the time, and I saw a whole bunch of cops just chasing after him. And I was like, oh, wow, that that's strange. That guy's running from the cops right now. But that's still not the craziest thing that I've ever seen out on the streets. I remember I was young. I was probably about like 16, 17 years old. I was on my way home and I was at a stoplight. And this was at a big intersection near my near my hometown. And there were cops surrounding all the roads. You could not move, you could not go left or right. You were stopped at this intersection. The cops had their guns out. The person that they were trying to get after had a gun out too. And surprisingly, no one fired any sort of shots. But the guy did end up, I was there at that corner for like a half hour because it was just a standoff. I mean, the guy eventually just surrendered. I don't know what that was about either. I never saw anything on the news. That's the one thing that really stinks about living in a big area If it doesn't end up in like something drastic really happening, you're not going to hear about it on the news. And something like that, that far south in the suburbs of Chicago, they're not going to pick it up. 
Now, here in Louisville, a high-speed chase that runs through town to town to town to town, yeah, they're going to pick that up. So if that incident, when I was like 16, 17 years old, if that were to happen here in Louisville, you would have had some sort of coverage on that. Maybe even helicopters flying over above with like the news channel going, oh, yeah, late break. And uh, we, we see here we got uh, somebody uh, pointing a gun at the at the police officers. That was intense. That was a very intense moment. That made me very uncomfortable. I could get very uncomfortable very easily. So that that's just me, especially when I feel like my life's at stake. I don't know, man. My head is just always moving around, scanning people just to get a read on them. I don't trust a lot of people. So that's why my head is always on a swivel, just trying to see what's going on. But man, a high speed chase. That's what we got to see on a hot girl walk. You probably never expect that to happen. Right? You just expect to go out in a nice, really hot walk. When I say hot walk, our our walks this week have been extremely hot. Because the weather back in Louisville has gone back up into like the mid nineties with high heat indexes. Like for a few weeks, it was nice and cool. I was like, man, I could get used to this now. But shot right back up, of course. It's that's what it's gonna do. One last like hurrah for summer. And then hopefully within the next couple of weeks, when we get into football season, it gets nice and cool. But um on if you're a new listener to this show, every single Monday I do a top three. And I thought it would be fitting this week to do a top three of the top three cop shows or criminal shows that are out there because I'm a sucker for those. I don't know if you watch A&E, but I feel like every single show that's on A&E is some sort of like crime show, true crime. Maybe they did some sort of field study and they found out, hey, this is what our network is known for. This is what we're going to go for. So here we go with our top three cop shows or some sort of crime shows on TV. We're going to start out with the OG at number three. That being cops. You could always count on a cops being on Fox. That's what it aired on, at least when I was a kid. It always aired on Fox. They had it on right before The Simpsons and then like late at night too. And that, you always saw some weird, weird stuff. And I felt like if you didn't see some sort of side boob that was hanging out of some lady's cutoff t-shirt on Cops, it wasn't a real episode of that show. For whatever reason, I feel like side boob and a cutoff t-shirt was always a staple on that show. So that's why coming in at number three of the top three crime shows slash cop shows is Cops. At number two, it's slowly becoming my number one And I hate to say this, but the first 48. And the reason why I hate to say this is my dad used to watch this show over and over and over again. And all I could think to myself is, Dad, how in the hell are you watching this show? It's so boring. Now I find my ass on the couch watching this show pretty much nonstop. It doesn't matter if I've seen the episode before. It doesn't matter... If the show stinks and they're not getting any sort of leads, I'm still going to watch it. And it's probably the best show on A&E. Out of all the shows that they have, it's probably the best. It beats out a show that I just watched not that long ago called Accused, Innocent, or Guilty. That was a good one, but it did not make my list of the top three crime shows that are on TV right now. But the first 48 takes the number two spot. And the number one spot on the top three crime shows slash cop shows on TV is Live PD slash On Patrol Live. I had to throw that in there because the show is now called something different. It doesn't even air on a e anymore, which reels, I don't even know how in the hell to get reels. That's the TV show that Live PD slash On Patrol Live is on now. But back when that show used to be on A&E on Fridays and Saturday nights, I used to fall asleep on the couch watching that show. And it would be on the air live for like two hours, and then they would replay that same show again, that same episode, and I would watch the whole thing twice, falling asleep on the couch. I'm like, this show is just so entertaining. You'd have 
high speed chases. You would have people getting busted for drugs. You would have Karens that were yelling at their neighbors. I mean, it had everything and everything that you wanted in drama being in one episode. And I think the hosts of that show were really good. They were always like, and the reason why I think it made it really good is because there was actual law enforcement hosts on that show. So they could really break every situation down for you, tell you how an officer is feeling in that sort of situation. So that show really good. And that's why it takes my number one spot on this week's top three crime slash cop shows. I'm so glad that I got to talk about those because cop shows, crime shows are some of my favorite TV shows to watch because I think besides live sports on TV, that's the only other thing that's on cable. That and wrestling. Those are about the two things. Or maybe those are the only things that I actually watch on cable. So that's the only thing that I ever find. But MTV can never find anything on there anymore. There's always movies. I don't know what it is, but whatever. Uh, It was a big week last week if you had student loans. If you had student loans and they're crippling you just to death with how much interest are on them and it feels like just as soon as you get a hold of them, you go and look at your, your balance and you still owe about the same amount that you did before because of all the interest on there. And I don't want to get super political on this conversation, but I think it's a big day for a lot of people. Like for me, exactly, I know what this means to me and for Nora in our life, just because of the $10,000 that's going to be forgiven. Now, there's a lot of people that are still saying that this might not exactly happen, but the odds are pretty good that this will happen. And a lot of people are upset about this. If you're upset about this, I'm sorry, okay? There's a lot of ways that your tax dollars are spent that are probably going to things that don't impact you on a daily basis. And this just might be another one of those things that uh, you're paying your taxes for that you don't get to utilize. And that's, that's just the way that it works. Your tax dollars goes towards certain programs to help other people out. And this to me is helping me out. And I feel like finally now I'm paying taxes towards something that is really going to help me out. This is a big deal. And I feel like it's a big deal for a lot of people that are in this generation where it was always you need to go to college in order to be successful. That was always the message that was spread. And when you're trying to make a decision as an 18-year-old, as a 17-year-old, where you're going to go to school to better pursue a life of happiness and more money because you're getting a college education, you know, that's a lot of pressure to weigh on you. And you're just trying to be like, hey, How am I going to make this work? Well, I got to take out loans in order to make this work. And I'm glad that this went through. Like I said, I'm happy this went through because I feel like there's a whole generation that was just trapped in all of this. Now, what needs to be done is a way to figure out how we can can eliminate this. That's the bigger issue. That's the conversation that I think really needs to take place is how are we going to fix this for generations to come? Are we still going to have student loans? Are we going to reduce the rate of higher education, which is probably something that needs to be done? I've always said this. If you're taking out a loan to go to college and you're trying to better your life by taking out a loan to get a degree in something, that should just be what you pay back. The amount that you borrow is the amount that you pay back. There should be no interest. If so, very little interest on it. And if these loans are through the government, there should be zero, and I mean zero, interest rate on them. Private banks, I guess they could do whatever they want. And that's the reason why, you know, credit card rates are always high. They always have that risk. You know, it's like 25%, but... They don't know. They got to make up that money some other place, you know. Um, So I understand that, that it's a business still at that point. But there needs to be a better solution moving forward on either lowering interest rates or just eliminating interest rates, having that money paid back in general. And, you know, I think it would be easier to say, hey, listen, we're going to start garnishing your wages because... We're going to take that $50 a month, but don't worry. All that is going towards the principal of the student loan that you're paying. 
And if your student loan payment is $200, $500, you know, there's some people that have have uh, student loan payments that are a lot higher than that. Some that have went to school to go be a doctor or a lawyer. And I've heard some people like, well, if you went to school and you did that and you got to pay all that money back, you're stupid for doing that. I wouldn't say that that person's stupid because they're obviously very smart if they became a doctor or a lawyer and they're paying that stuff back. But when you take out that amount of money, you know, it's it's hard to pay back. And even though they're making good money, it's still a lot because they have other insurances to pay for, you know, uh, to cover their end legally, you know, especially with doctors. That That's, you know, they have a lot of insurance to pay for, but... Just as long as the conversation is up about eliminating student debt and only taking away ten thousand, whatever the case may be, most of the time right now, this ten thousand dollars is just eliminating the interest rate on a lot of those loans. But this conversation needs to be snowballed into the bigger overall conversation of what are we going to do going forward so we don't have to keep helping people out with student loan debts. Like, let's let's end the conversation right there. That's it. So let's not get more political about it because I could. There's a lot of information that I've read about um, that would be very, very interesting if I wanted to get more political on that topic. But I, I only do a 20 to 30 minute show, so not enough time there. Not enough time. And, and speaking about spending money and probably able to spend a little bit more money if I don't have those student loans to pay back. I could just, you know, be pouring my money into the economy. Um, but I would probably spend my money on some stupid shit as well. I mean, that's going to happen. I'm a tightwad. I'm not going to overspend on a lot of things, but every once in a while, there are some things that I do want to overspend on. And one of the things that I want to overspend on right now is Lululemon pants. I've heard so many people talk about how awesome Lululemon pants are for men. Like the ABC pants. I don't know if you've heard about those, but I've heard they are the best work pants that you could possibly have. If you have to be in the office, they're so comfortable. You could wear them for just about everything and anything. You could wear like a sports jacket with it and you're still going to look good. But the reason why I am even thinking about this right now is I bought a whole bunch of work pants last year but these work pants were like $20 from JC Penney's. I mean, they look nice, they look presentable, but these motherfuckers have faded so fast. And I don't even wash my pants all that often, but they faded so fast and I'm like, you get what you pay for. They were $20 pants, and I think they're $20 pants with taxes cuz I think they're like 18 something. So they might have been $20 after taxes and everything like that. So I was talking to Nora. I was like, all I keep reading online, because I'm trying to, you know, do my research like I always do before I buy something because that's the way I work. And it takes me forever to buy something because of all the research that I need to do on it. Every single article that I find online is talking about Lululemon's pants. If you're going to work, you need to have these pants. Yes, they're expensive, but they'll last you forever. That's what everyone says about it. And I also found out what ABC stands for in the Lululemon ABC pants. Anti-ball crushing. At least that's what the internet told me. It could could totally stand for something else, but at least what I found was that ABC stands for anti-ball crushing, which, honestly, I want to buy those pants. If they're going to advertise as anti-ball crushing, I'm in. Buy me those pair. But they're like 100. When I say they're expensive... $128. $128. That's the retail cost on them. I swear, I've never spent that much money on a pair of pants. I've spent like $150 on a suit. Now, yeah, that's a cheap suit, but I feel like you can still look presentable in a $150 suit, right? I feel like you could look presentable in a pair of $20 pants. But over time, is that $150 suit, those $20 pants going to last? A suit maybe lasts a little bit longer just because you're not wearing it on a daily basis. But in this case, when I'm wearing a pair of pants to work every single day or, you know, I rotate them because I'm wearing different colors, I want them to last. One guy that 
uh, you know, I was reading the article that he had on him. He's like, I've had these pants for years, and this is the way that they still look. And they looked brand new. Brand new. Nora asked me this weekend, she was like, hey, do you want to go to Lululemon to try those pants on? I said, no. She's like, why? You've been talking about it for so long. Why don't you want to try these pants on? I said, the biggest reason why I don't want to try these pants on is because I'm going to try them on, and I'm going to love them, and I'm going to want some in like a khaki color, navy blue, black, gray. I said, I'm going to want to buy like five, six pairs. I don't have the money <laughs> to spend on Lululemon pants. That's why I'm so nervous to walk into that store and just try on a pair of pants. But they're all over the place. And if you've tried them, let me know. Slide into my DMs at Luke Kelly Show on Instagram or Twitter. That's where you can find me. If you wear them to work every single day and you love them, they've held up, let me know. I'm serious. I want to buy a pair. And the other pair, I'll ask. I'll start asking for like gift cards for holidays, birthdays, and stuff like that. Just like... Get me a Visa gift card or get me a Lululemon gift card so that way I could get those pants based off of your reviews, okay? Slide those to me. Um, uh, We went into a store, though, this weekend, not Lululemon. We went into Sam's Club because there was a couple of things that we needed to get. And I I feel like we go to Sam's Club or Costco way too often for just two people. But we kind of just went into Sam's Club just to walk around to see if we could find something to cook for dinner on Saturday night. And when Nora and I were in there, I was like, this playlist sounds like it's all Taylor Swift. And I wasn't even around Nora at that time. And I found Nora. She was over by the clothes section. She goes, hey, did you notice they're they're playing all Taylor Swift songs right now? And I was like, yeah, I, I actually did notice that. I was like, I wonder why Sam's Club is playing all Taylor Swift. Now, someone that used to work in radio if someone is going to pull a stunt like that, there has to be some sort of payoff with it. Either Taylor Swift's coming out with some new, new music that she's going to exclusively release like a special CD over at Walmart and Sam's Club. Like there's some sort of catch with it, right? A company's just not going all Taylor Swift. Although I think that a store like Sam's Club or Walmart could go to all Taylor Swift just because it's like... one. Taylor Swift music is safe to play. That's just a, that's just the easiest way to put it. It's the safest music to play that is going to satisfy a lot of people in the store. It's going to be good music for the kids to listen to. You're not going to have to worry about any sort of bad words or anything like that. So it's just it's a safe option to play inside of a store. And apparently Swifties have caught on that Taylor Swift music has been playing at Walmart and Sam's Club. They're starting to run wild right now on social media. Wild. My wife, she is a Swifty. Hardcore Swifty. There was a few months ago where she released, I, I, I don't remember what album it was, but she released some uh, albums to like local record stores that were autographed. And it wasn't just like a printed autograph. It was an actual handwritten autograph that was on those CDs. Nora got one of those. That's how much she is a super fan of Taylor Swift. So she looks on TikTok and she's finding all these theories on what exactly is going on with Taylor Swift. And some people are expecting some new music to come out from Taylor Swift. There was a whole bunch of cryptic messages on Taylor Swift's Instagram and people are starting to add up everything. And this is what Swifties do. They find little hidden things. They're like, well, this Adds up to the number 13, so that's Taylor Swift's favorite number, so that means something has to be coming. Or, you know, she organized her post to equal this number, and now it's going to lead towards this because this number was in that song. And, you know, with Taylor Swift trying to come out with her Taylor version almost on almost every single album that she has, it has everyone speculating from just the slightest little like mumble of like one little lyric that was in one of her songs that isn't a Taylor version yet. Everybody's like, Oh, it's going to be a Taylor version coming out soon. And I guess the VMAs are coming up and everyone's expecting Taylor Swift to do something special at the VMAs on MTV. So that's what all the chatter is about right now for Swifties. So if you were in the store over the weekend, if you went into Walmart, you went into Sam's club, you heard Taylor Swift because it was nationwide. You heard it. Nora's sister works at Walmart, and she said, 
oh my gosh, I can't believe they're playing nothing but Taylor Swift all weekend long. So if you're there, there's some sort of reason, and it is brewing. If you're a Swifty and you know, you think you know what's going on, let me know. So that way I could tell my wife and I have something to talk to her Taylor Swift related about, and I would feel really smart if I'm like, hey, Nora, did you know the reason why Taylor Swift did this is because it really means this, and it has to mean a Taylor's version of this album's coming out now? I would win husband of the year if you shared that information with me. Okay, at Luke Kelly Show, Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for listening to this episode coming up on Wednesdays. My wife, Nora, she stops by to to give us a little smut tale. She does a whole bunch of reading, and it's mostly about smutty, dirty, adult things. And the book that she's reading right now that she has told me about when we go on our hot girl walks, I'm like, whoa. I didn't even know that that was an option in the bedroom. So there should be some juicy, juicy details on Wednesday's episode of the Luke Kelly Show with the smut tale from Miss Nora. All right, I'll talk to you on Wednesday here on the Luke Kelly Show.